Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at NVIDIA GDC in Washington. Super excited to be with uh, Andrew Wheeler from HP. Andrew, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to chat about various things. What is HP up to? Uh, but uh, just for audience, would you like to start with a quick intro? What do you do at HP? And then we can get into various other uh, discussion points. Yeah, well, first of all, great. Thanks for having me. For uh, sure. I've watched several of your videos, so big fan. So Thank you. Appreciate pretty exciting. It. My kids are going to think I'm cool all of a sudden. <laughs> so. Uh, so Andrew Wheeler, my day job at Hewlett Packard Enterprise is I run our applied research group, uh, HPE Labs. Yes, uh, fantastic. Uh, Andrew, I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, I know we both saw amazing announcements today at the keynote. Uh, just to start with, uh, we we all know NVIDIA GTC in DC. Your the focus is more on the cutting edge AI for public sector. I'm kind of curious to know uh, how HP is helping public organization build scale their sovereign AI, uh, and uh, you know how are you all working towards that uh, uh, public sector domain? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, in, from the keynote and everything else you see, obviously, the topic like AI factories is a huge piece, right? Um, and then you know, we as a company, right? We've had a really long, deep history working with public sector, yep. you know, everything uh, from Department of Energy, uh, you know, building out a lot of the, you know, large scale leadership class supercomputers over the yes. years. Uh, but it goes deeper than that too, you know, a lot of the work that we do, um, you know, equipping university environments. Uh, you know, we've got several initiatives that were announced even this afternoon. So, yes. uh, you know, as a company doing AI factories at different scales, all the way from edge environments, all the way to that leadership side of things, uh, you know, really kind of brings the breadth of the company in, and so that public-private partnership, very, very important to us. Yes, 100%, uh, thanks for sharing, those are fantastic insights. Uh, just uh, staying on this topic itself, why is public sector such a critical area focus, uh, not only just for HP, but in, generally, in general for the AI space as well. Uh, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I think, uh, and a lot of people maybe just don't recognize this as much, but again, given our deep history of the engagement we've, we've had, um, you know, those partnerships, um, you know, it, it's a known deployment model, meaning yep. if there's a, there's a grand challenge in, in the space, whether it's scientific, medical, uh, working together on those problems, public and, and private partnerships, that's proven to be the most effective model to really you know, achieve some pretty remarkable breakthroughs. Yep. And then, you know, specifically when we talk about AI, well, many of the advances that we're seeing here today, you know, you'll see out on the floor, whether it's you know, related to dense compute or the storage solutions, the networking, yep. the liquid cooling, a lot of those advances were pioneered through, uh, you know, just high performance computing, you know, totally. starting years ago. Yep. So now we're seeing a lot of that capability now being deployed in these AI factories. Yeah, uh, that's so true. Uh, and thanks for sharing that uh, very valid point. I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little bit about, you know, the hot topic that I've been hearing from a lot of enterprise leaders here is sovereign AI. Uh, how does HP help agencies ensure data sovereignty, uh, compliance, and security while still e enabling and making sure that innovation is in place? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, that's that's another great one, and uh, you know, I kind of keep harping on this theme of our <laughs> connections that we've had, you know, with this sector and this space. But again, a lot of our projects, a lot of our collaborations over the years, also dealing with environments that are very. Uh, sensitive, right? Whether it's related to national security. So you might imagine we can take a lot of those learnings, uh, you know, from that work, and now Sovereign has some of the same properties, right? Yes, 100%. Where you're talking about data privacy, you need things like air gap solutions. True. Uh, so all, a lot of that is for us is, is kind of second nature. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for us, Sovereign AI, AI factories for that space, again, we can kind of lean on you know, really the decades of experience we have working in, in that area. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and yes, definitely it goes long back where HP kind of started and always kind of takes care of the data security is in place, the yes. data governance is in place. So that's fantastic. Uh, what role does sovereign AI uh, play in areas like government, defense, 
but not only just that, also citizen services or large scale resources. What are your thoughts around that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think every enterprise, uh, you know, ha they have similar problems where, right. especially deploying AI, look, they have to be within compliance on things. True. Um, you know, so a couple of just great examples. Um, you know, we're doing, we're working with uh, the city of Vail. I'm based out of Colorado, so nice. you know, I know this one. But you know, <laughs> they've got a smart city initiative. Yes. And as you might imagine, look, AI can really help, you know, improve a lot of the public services, the efficiency of, of services that are offered. But guess what? It's got to be done in a very transparent and protected manner. You know, for the so citizens, cool. they want to understand, look, how's my data being used? And yeah, of course I would love to zip through town and hit every light without stopping, but uh, you start putting up cameras and, and things like that. Yep. You know, policy-wise, um, you know, you got to be careful and making sure you adhere to every everything that's in place. Exactly, that's so true. Uh, also, as a leader in high-performance computing and supercomputing, how are these technologies enabling public sector and also national scale innovation. How does it all come together? Any thoughts around that, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, a lot of this kind of feeds on itself. I mentioned how a lot of the technologies developed for classic HPC simulation and modeling now have you know, greatly benefited yep. you know, what we're doing in AI factories and how that's kind of exploding across the enterprise. But you know, it's everything else then that, that you do as a big initiative. So the other thing I'd really want to underscore is, uh, you know, you look at some of the large initiatives, if I go back to the Exascale mm -hmm. initiative that was put forward a few years ago. Right. Well again, it's, it's kind of putting that challenge out there and having that collaborative model between, um, you know, public sector and industry true. That, uh, that's enabled us as a country to kind of push through that barrier. So true. And so, Look at the things you know it unlocks now. So whether it's for material science, it's it's medical, it's you know it's it's a lot of things that can make our daily lives, 100%. everyone's daily lives, yes. better. So it's everything from from that, and then we're going to see it just go across all of the other industries and enterprise. So you know whether it's insurance, banking, yeah, all of this is is uh, is going to have a little bit of a trickle down. Love it. Uh, Andrew, uh, one last question for you is around quantum computing, and we've heard some great announcements today. Yeah. How can that technology benefit government initiatives, and what is HP's role there? Yeah, no, great great question. So, uh, yeah, it's all about AI now, but you see more and more quantum yes, exactly. showing up. But, um, you know, look, ultimately, we think quantum can address a certain class of problem uh, that we just simply can't today with, with you know, classical means. So, you know, for us as a company, we think, look, the, the future here is, is a highly integrated system. Yes. We're going to treat the, um, the quantum computer or the quantum processing unit just like we would, you know, another form of accelerated compute. So, um, so a lot of how we've seen the AI yes. infrastructure and factories come up, we'll essentially deploy some of the same techniques to try to harness quantum, but yes. Yeah, the idea is, you know, it's going to go off and, and address and solve things we can't do otherwise. So it's, yes, that's uh, the it's power. super exciting. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. Andrew, you've shared some amazing insights today. Thanks for doing that. But I, have, I promise this is the last question that I have, and that is for our audience. If they want to reach out, learn more about the initiatives that HP has and all the announcements that you all constantly make and innovate, obviously, at a very high speed, where can they do that? And if they want to connect with you, which is the best platform to connect? Oh yeah, great question. Well, HPE.com <laughs> is probably the, the portal, yes. the entry to everything, and uh, yeah, you can see some of our latest announcements there. Uh, navigate your way to, to HPE Labs team, and, yep. and uh, eventually my contact information will show up. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Andrew, once again, thanks for visiting the Robert Show. We'll keep the conversation going, and definitely looking for a 2.0 session with you very soon. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, thanks. Andrew. Appreciate it. All right, bye. Thank you everyone for joining us today.